Self-sufficiency in food may seem like the goal of a lunatic nowadays, and realistically, growing your own wheat and rice may be downright impossible for everyone in today's world. Now, there are wonderful benefits for growing just a part of your diet yourself, but the secret to producing more of your own calories may lay in growing root crops. Sweet potatoes is one of them. I'll share with you my attempt at growing it myself. I'm Siloe Oliveira, artist and gardener, and I'm on a quest for growing more of my own food in my suburban homestead. This is my first attempt at growing sweet potatoes. I put a paper napkin inside of a glass and fill it with water. If you have a sweet potato that has sprouted laying around, you can try this too. Using a knife, I cut away the slips that have started to sprout, leaving a bit of the tuber attached. Much like regular potatoes, which are in fact not related to sweet potatoes, they are grown from slips, or shoots, that develop in a tuber and not by seed. I've read about how to grow them in gardening books, but there is nothing like trying it yourself. Sweet potato is a great crop to grow in order to increase the amount of calories you raise because it produces a lot more in small spaces and is less energy intensive to manage and use than its grain counterparts, wheat and rice. I'll let these slips root out for a week, placing them in a sunny window until I'm ready to plant them. Sweet potatoes need hot weather to grow. They will stunt and die if temperatures reach the 30s. It is best to do this in late spring when soil temperatures are above 60 degrees. In this respect, they are the opposite of regular potatoes that grow well in colder temperatures. I'm planting them in ground that I've worked in some composted manure. In fact, they will only develop tubers if there is enough sun and light. They are perfect crops for sunny and balmy climates like the south, but can be a challenge in the north. Sweet potatoes are very nutritious. It's part of the Convuvolacea family, which includes the likes of morning glory and bindweed, both poisonous. They are resilient plants that function as weeds. Their drive to grow and conquer is evidenced in how difficult it is to get rid of them. I plant the slips about a foot apart from each other, burying the roots in the earth and leaving the shoots just proud of the soil. I'm only growing a few plants as an experiment this year because my garden is short on sunny spots and I'd rather have other veggies like tomatoes homegrown because of their flavor. After planting for the first month or two, my sweet potato vines grew very slowly. So slowly that I basically gave up on them. Weeds had grown around them. I decided to take the weeds out and plant tomatoes and herbs around the stunted sweet potato vines. I also protected the vines from the groundhog with a cage, since sweet potato leaves happen to be a groundhog delicacy. Now I knew the tomatoes would probably take over the whole space and completely stunt the sweet potatoes. And a month later, that's exactly what happened. But there was a surprise. Maybe motivated by the competition, the sweet potatoes started to grow and shoot out fast. It was growing through crevices, trying to outcompete the tomato for light. It even flowered, a sign of maturity but I could only speculate if it was producing. An old way of telling when sweet potato is ready for harvest is to count 40 days from flowering and then digging them up. I'm not sure if this is a reliable rule of thumb, but 40 days in from flowering, I did have to take a look. I pulled one of the vines out and discovered a small tuber for me. Underwhelming, yes, but I kind of expected it. I decided to wait a few more weeks before uprooting the plant and seeing the results of this experiment. It is important to harvest them before a strong frost. If freezing temperatures get to the tubers, they will be ruined. So, as the weather started to turn for the worse, and as the garden prepared for winter's embrace, I went out to see the fruit of my labor. Not much labor actually, and it's actually not a fruit. But I barely took care of the vines. Armed with a garden fork, I go about unearthing them. This time, only small tubers materialize. Disappointing? Yes. But I saw it coming. I knew it was because of the shading. But there was a silver lining. As I pulled the cage with the vines in it, 
one tuber was unearthed and came along. It happened to be a decent sized tuber, a small sign from my garden, a consolation prize, and a message. Do not give up. It is possible. We have a question from a viewer. He writes, My name is Evan. I'm planning to start a YouTube channel about gardening, and I'm wondering if you had any tips. And where did you get your Malabar spinach seeds? Well, Evan, if you want to start a YouTube channel, I would say that the first thing you need to know is what do you want to get out of this YouTube channel? Do you want to use it only as a video journal so that you can remember things that you've planted and how they did in previous years? If you want to do that, just get a camera, start rolling. That's it. Now, if you want to reach more people, then you have to think about what is your differential. To be noticed in YouTube, there has to be something special about what you're doing. It can be either because you have a really great personality and you're funny. It could be also because you have great content. You have scientific content as Stephen from Alberta Urban Garden and also Patrick from One Yard Revolution. They bring in that scientific content that people look for. It all depends on who you want to reach and why you want to reach them. So be clear about your goals and work for them. And be patient. It takes a long time to, to build a following, to have people notice, but if you're doing something that's different, and if you're doing something that people are looking for, then it's good. Now, if you start, and let's say you don't get an immediate reaction from people, keep trying it, ask for criticism from people who are truly gonna give you good criticism. That's always good to, to know. See if you need to, to get better angles, get better editing, if you need perhaps music in the background. So get the response from people. As for where I got my Malabar spinach seeds, I got them from Nichols Garden Nursery. It's a small nursery that you can find online. I'll put the link in the description. And they sell um, heirloom seeds and they have good prices, I believe. But I think online might be your best bet to find Malabar spinach seeds. You might find it in a local store, depending on where you live but it's usually easier to find it online. We have another question, this time from Cheryl. She writes, Hello, I loved your YouTube video on tomato seeds. Thanks, Cheryl. Could you tell me how to germinate a lemon seed and the stages of growing it into a tree? I'm also wanting to start oranges, limes, and grapefruit trees as well. I am from Arizona and miss my citrus trees. I live now in Northern California, so it may be a little harder due to the cold, damp weather. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Cheryl. I love citrus trees. I wish I could grow them in my garden. Unfortunately, living in Maryland, it's impossible unless I grow them indoors. In your case, Northern California, from my research, it seems that it's possible to grow citrus there. It apparently is one of the hubs of citrus production in the United States. Now, I don't know specifically about the difficulties of growing citrus because I'm so far from that reality. Now, interestingly, if you need to grow indoors, Luke from MI Gardener, he grows citrus trees indoors in Michigan. I know it's crazy. Now, if you want to grow indoors, look at his videos. You might learn a thing or two about growing citrus indoors. And if you want to grow it outside, then you might need to research from a source that knows a little bit more about your location and about the subject of citrus growing. Thanks for writing in, and I hope I was helpful. If you have a question, write in to seed of choice at gmail.com, share your question, your rant, your comment, and I'll try to answer or respond to the best of my abilities. If you want to see more videos like these, please remember to subscribe and also to like and watch on a regular basis. Thank you very much. Join me next time. Remember to send in questions, comments, or tips to seedofchoice at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Suburban Homestead.